Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund. I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today, it's Wednesday, the 17th of September, 2025, and I'm here to give you your Fusion News update of the week. And now on to our key headlines for today's episode. One, General Atomics marks completion of ITIS superconducting fusion magnet. Two, Energy Department announces $134 million to advance US fusion leadership through targeted research. Three, Durham scientists advance ITER reactor with landmark superconductor study. Four, Super X design shows major advantages in handling hot exhaust of fusion energy. Five, Livermore approves billion dollar nuclear fusion research facility proposal. And make sure you stay till the end, because as usual, I have a couple of interesting bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. One, General Atomics marks completion of ITIS superconducting fusion magnet. First up, we have a story from American Nuclear Society about General Atomics celebrating a landmark achievement, the completion of the central solenoid modules for the ITER fusion device being built in southern France. This central solenoid, nearly 60 feet tall and weighing 1,000 tonnes, will be the largest and most powerful pulsed superconducting magnet ever made, storing up to 6.4 gigajoules of energy and generating a peak field of 13 Tesla. Constructed over 15 years at General Atomics Magnet Technology Center in San Diego, each of the six coil modules plus a spare was wound using ultra-precise niobium tin superconducting cable made in Japan. These modules are now either en route or have arrived at ITER's assembly hall. This achievement is a major US contribution to one of the world's most ambitious science projects, underscoring both the engineering ingenuity of California's fusion community and America's ongoing investment in practical commercial fusion. According to project leaders, delivering the solenoid required supply chain innovations, new manufacturing methods and collaboration with hundreds of US suppliers. This was a moment marking the US as a continued major player in international fusion advancements. Two, Energy Department announces $134 million to advance US fusion leadership through targeted research. Next up is a story from the US Department of Energy who have announced $134 million in funding to advance American fusion leadership through two targeted programs. $128 million for the Fusion Innovative Research Engine or FIRE collaboratives and $6.1 million in funding for the Innovation Network for Fusion Energy or INFUSE program. These programs are designed to push forward key fusion technologies in both public and private sectors, supporting early stage companies, national laboratories and workforce development. The funds will boost research into advanced materials, diagnostics, and prototype designs, while accelerating the timeline for the DOE's bold decadal vision for commercial fusion. Secretary Chris Wright reinforced that the US aims to lead the global race for clean, limitless energy. This investment sits alongside US engagement in ITER and domestic flagship projects like D3D and the Infuse Industry Partnership Program, creating momentum for broad collaboration between government, academia, and private industry. Adding to this momentum, FIA member Thayer Energy has been selected for three awards through the DOE's Infuse program, as reported on Globe Newswire. Thayer Energy, a spin out of Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, focused on commercializing the Stellarator fusion design using planar coil superconducting magnets, and they will use the funds to accelerate workflows. AI-driven plasma modeling, and high-fidelity magnet performance predictions. Three, Durham scientists advance ITER reactor with landmark superconductor study. Third up is a story from Innovation News Network that tells us about how a team at Durham University has completed a decade-long superconductor study, verifying the quality and reliability of over 5,500 niobium tin and niobium titanium samples destined for ITER's vast magnet systems. Their pioneering use of statistical analysis and accommodating samples that were irreversibly changed during testing helped set new global standards for material verification. This work ensures ITER's powerful coils will meet extraordinary operational demands over decades of fusion experiments. It's not just a technical achievement. 
Durham's campaign has propelled new training opportunities through the Centre for Doctoral Training in Fusion Power, helping build the talent pipeline for the UK's expanding fusion sector. The team's leadership aligns with global momentum as public and private ventures alike pursue the goal of reliable and scalable fusion, ensuring that the material backbone of these devices is robust and future ready. Four, SuperX design shows major advantages in handling hot exhaust of fusion energy. Next up, new research featured on Fizz.org spotlights the UK AEA's SuperX Diverter, a critical leap for future fusion design. By greatly lengthening the exhaust path for hot plasma, SuperX enables cooler, more manageable exhaust temperatures and reduces heat stress on materials by more than a factor of 10. Experiments at the MAST upgrade Tokamak, augmented by international partners, confirmed that this novel geometry allows plasma-facing components to better withstand repeated fusion pulses, substantially improving durability and efficiency. Crucially, it allows critical separation of the ultra-hot plasma core from the cold diverter region, bridging a major engineering challenge for commercial-scale fusion. With future devices like STEP, DEMO and ARC in mind, SuperX is fast becoming the design standard for reliable, low-maintenance exhaust handling in next-gen fusion plants, all while maintaining high overall plasma performance. Five. Livermore approves billion-dollar nuclear fusion research facility proposal. Finally, we have an article from Patch about Livermore, California, where they've approved a potential $1 billion fusion research campus proposed by FAA member Pacific Fusion. Set to host world-class laboratories, office space, and a startup accelerator, the facility will put Livermore at the center of US and global fusion innovation. Could you think of a better city? Our city seal has the atom on it, said Vice Mayor Evan Branning. Local officials and industry backers see this project as a catalyst for attracting elite researchers, commercial partners and high quality jobs, building momentum for the region as a global centre for breakthrough energy research. As public and private funding flows into fusion worldwide, Livermore's new hub will support validation, design and scaling of cutting edge power systems. The council support signals increased US confidence in Fusion's path from lab to commercial grid and positions California as a focal point for the next era of energy technology. And now on to the bonuses. My first bonus is an article from The Economist which highlights the race to build tabletop fusion technology. Compact devices making fusion research more accessible for startups, universities and independent labs. These smaller machines could lower the barrier to experimental fusion, spawning rapid innovation and attracting new talent into the field. Finally, I have a bonus about Kyocera's new partnership with Kyoto Fusioneering in the area of fusion ceramics development. By producing advanced heat-resistant ceramic components for extreme fusion environments, Kyocera is enabling longer-lasting, more efficient reactions. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment, or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, the links are in the description below. You can also follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.